Becky Rulopa, and I'm really excited to share with you about Focus on Five. The first thing I want to share is something pretty obvious. This is what the course looked like last time if you had the textbook. It was called Beginnings, and now it is called Focus on Five. So Beginnings is no more. So just to get that straight right off the bat. But please, as you listen, if you have questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll take questions at the end. So please, if I don't answer your question, make sure you go ahead and take advantage of that. So I want to go ahead and start by highlighting some of the great changes from the last edition to this one. Um, we have a lot of things that have changed, a lot of updates. And one of the major things was the heritage studies and the science portions were really beefed up. So we have um, a lot stronger heritage studies and science emphasis. We also have really purposeful biblical integration in the teacher's edition. So if you are using this teacher's edition, you will find design things purposefully and how he um, is working in our world. And so those are some great, great changes. Um, the art was majorly updated. Lots and lots of really great new art going on in this edition. Let me move this out of the way because it's sliding down on me. So let me just have a moment here, move these out of the way. There we go. Um, so I want to share some of the new art with you. We have the phonics characters. So this is Mrs. Short and Mr. Short and Uncle Short, and they got a new makeover. And so did Miss Long, Marker E, Miss Silent, and Bossy R. And they just are a lot of fun. We also have new theme characters. So Hopscotch looks a little different than he did the last time. We have his friend Hopper. We have um, Bonnie who's the bird, and we have um, Dottie, she's the ladybug, and they all look very modern and, and bright and happy. So lots of new art, which was great. Now, another big change was our listening stories, and some of our readers were um, updated. Some just were updated, actually some readers were completely changed. So there's lots of new good stuff in this edition. But I want to share with you probably more about the video lesson changes. Um, I did not teach this the last time, so um, that's <laughs> one change. Um, but we did um, update all of those art type things to match the new edition. So we have all new graphics, um, lots of animations, um, a lot of things just to bring the course to life. We also shortened the lessons. We um, took the feedback that we had gotten and decided that 60 minutes was really a long time for a little person to you know, really focus and be still. And even with um, some exercise time and things that were in there, it was still really long. So we cut it down to 45 minutes instead of 60 total time. But we didn't just do that, we also split that 45 minutes into two videos. So there, um, I'll be sharing more about that. I don't want to get ahead of myself, um, but I'll share more about that. So we have two videos, total of 45 minutes um, for the video course. We also um, cut down on the extra activities. There were lots of like arts and crafts types of things. There will still be plenty of cutting and gluing and hands-on things, but we really wanted to make it easier for mom not to have to collect all kinds of stuff or go out and buy a lot of special things for activities. So when we do have some activities that we do ask for supplies for, they're, they're really thought through. Um, so they're very purposeful and there'll be more on that in a little bit as well. So I wanna keep on going. Um, it's organized into 160 lessons. So this matches the K-5 math. Um, it's 160 lessons. The focus on fives is 160 lessons. And then it's broken down into six units. So if you have the teacher's edition, there are six of these. That's a lot. Um, and then from there, they're broken down into 32 weeks of instruction. So that's kind of the organization. Usually each week has its own theme. 
and um, it might be you know out west the prairie it might be something in science like learning about turtles and frogs and things like that so that's just a little overview there so back to the separated lessons let me explain that a little bit more every day there's a 15 minute lesson and it can be a heritage studies lesson or a science lesson or a literature lesson um, it'll be usually heritage studies or science. Now I know that on our YouTube channel, um, BJU Press Homeschool, there is a literature video up that you can um, watch if you're interested in seeing that one. Um, but it does rotate. It's not like always a, a rotation heritage science um, literature. It really depends on our theme for the week. So we might have three heritage studies lessons um, three days in a row and then we might have a literature lesson, or we might have a full four days of science lessons. So it does vary. Um, it's not you know, per perfectly mathematically um, broken up. So um, I also wanted to uh, mention the language arts lessons are the 30 minute lessons, and they, um, they are pretty packed, <laughs> to be really honest. So I'll walk you through, through a day um, soon in just a little bit. Uh, so those are the 30 minute lessons and then every fifth day there is only a reading lesson so no heritage studies no science no literature no language arts just reading and that's a 30 minute lesson and that most of the lesson is not with me and i'll tell you a little bit more about that later but we have mrs lawson who did the majority of the teaching um, last time for the video course she is doing the reading lessons this time and she did an amazing job so let's keep on going. I want to kind of um, walk you through what you could expect if you um, watch a Heritage Studies lesson. So we start off with our Hippity Hop Review. And the point of the Hippity Hop Review really is to activate prior knowledge. So if we've been learning about turtles, we might review what we've been learning about turtles before we go into um, our lesson. If we're learning about um, patriotic symbols, We'll review that before we go into our lesson. Sometimes we're reviewing our phonics. So we just want our brain to wake up, get ready to think. And so we do that with our hippity hop review. Then we'll head into our lesson. So if it's heritage studies, we start off the year with learning about our community helpers. And we have some great resources that our production team made to go along with that. Um, here you can see an example of one of our segments that was about firefighters. And they went out into our community and shot footage um, of, a, of some fire stations that we have locally. And the firefighters were so gracious and gave us really an in-depth look at what they do. So it might be something like that. Later on, um, as we progress through the course, um, Hopscotch will come and share some fun facts with us. So we might be learning about geography and he'll come and share about different areas of the United States. Or he might come and share with us about symbols of liberty. So he comes in and, and joins us um, as well. We also have him as a puppet, and you'll see him a little bit later. And sometimes he'll just come and we'll have a conversation going on, and he helps me just talk through things and make learning a little bit more fun. So once the lesson is done, we wrap up with a work text page and this just really reinforces the theme whatever we're studying this is the reinforcement just to make sure they really are taking away what they need to um, from the lesson so if you're doing if it's a science day um, we have a lot of fun with that too um, i teach a lot of the lessons but we also have a science lab and in the science lab let me skip to that hippity hop review those days too so i'm getting ahead of myself that's okay so there's a hippity hop review again activate prior knowledge get our brains thinking we jump right into the lesson after that and sometimes we have the science lab and my friend mrs gillenwater helped us out with the science labs and so she is very passionate about science she teaches some of the life science um, and earth science i think as well later on, on in the upper grades and she came in and she here in this lesson you can see she's teaching about on how to keep our teeth healthy and she even shows us how to brush them on camera it's really really funny so she um, was a great help and also gives another face because I'm teaching k5 math 
and I'm teaching focus on fives. That's a lot of Mrs. R. So this gives a break, which is really nice. Um, so that is some, you know, the kind of thing you can expect in a science lesson. And then we would wrap up with our work text page again to reinforce what we're learning, make sure we're taking away what we should from the lesson. Now, I'm not going to go over the literature lessons because you can watch that on the BJU Homeschool YouTube um, channel. So um, go ahead and, and take a look at that if you haven't already. Um, let's go on to the language arts lessons. I already mentioned they are 30 minutes long and they are packed. We cut down the overall time from 60 minutes to 45 minutes for this class. So when we did that, we really crammed it in tight. Um, so I move through these lessons pretty quickly, but we have a lot of fun while we do it too. So let me introduce you to what we do in these lessons. We have Bonnie, she's our bluebird, and she comes along and she is really, really good at hearing the sounds of the letters. So she helps us with our phonemic awareness. And we play games with her where she will tweet if she hears the t sound at the end of the word or she will fly to the correct letter on the screen. So we play a lot of games with her just to make sure that we are really understanding the sounds of the letters and have those down. She also likes to sing a lot. And we sing and sing and sing and sing in Focus on Fives. And our production team has done animations for many, 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 many um, songs. So we have really, really nice um, songs that go along with this course. So we will sing about the different letters, we'll sing about the alphabet, we'll sing about handwriting, and we sing um, about the different themes that we're learning about. So lots of fun with that. And then we have um, our phonics character story animations. So those characters that I showed you at the beginning, they help us understand phonics. They help us understand how the different sounds come together and make a word. And so each time one of these characters is introduced, we have a story animation that goes along with it. So here you see Mr. and Mrs. Short, and they are always together. And Mrs. Short represents the short vowel sound. Mr. Short, the consonant that follows. And Uncle Short, he shows up sometimes, and he's the second consonant in a short vowel word that has two consonants at the end. So we have a lot of fun with them. Just learning, um, kind of connecting a visual with how these words are put together so we can understand it better. Um, then we have Hopper. And Hopper, he hops a lot. So we hop a lot too. Um, there, we really don't s just sit still. Um, you know, I'm teaching mostly five-year-olds, and five-year-olds move, so we move with Hopper too. So Hopper helps us with our splash words. You've probably never heard of splash words before, but that's what we call our high-frequency words. Those are the words that are our words that we have to memorize. You might know them as memory words or service words. They've been called a lot of different things, and in this edition, they're called high-frequency words. But that's way too much for us. So we just call them splash words, the words that don't follow the normal rules. And so every single lesson, we splash with Hopper. And he will jump from lily pad to lily pad as we say these words that we have to memorize. So we drill them every single day. And at the end, we always, always end with a big splash and jump really, really big. So we have fun with him. Um, this leads us into the whole purpose of learning the sounds and understanding how those sounds come together and form words, which is reading. So we go through a phonics um, story every single day together. We read silently and then we read out loud. And the reason we do this, even at a, at a five-year-old level, is because silent reading helps us with our comprehension. So they get the chance to read silently first, and then we come back and read orally so that they have that chance to figure out the words, understand what they are, and then be able to read out loud and share that with each other. 
So this is just an example. The little line will move along um, as we go through this story so that way the students can keep track of where we are. So handwriting, we're not going to leave out handwriting. Handwriting um, we do with our friend Dottie. And Dottie helps us make sure that our letter formations are just right. Um, she shows us the strokes. You can see the different colors in this uppercase A. So she's showing us that each one of those parts of the letter A, those strokes, we have to lift our pencil before we make that next mark. And so she helps us. Now you won't only see Dottie like this. She actually is a little puppet that also comes and I talk to her and we have great conversations about handwriting. So you'll have to check that out in the video that is posted, Language Arts one on the YouTube channel. So once again, we reinforce. So as soon as we have finished handwriting, we moved right into a work text page that is a handwriting practice. So every day there's one page of handwriting to reinforce the letter that we've learned or the word that we've learned to, uh, to write. And then uh, let sometimes, this depends, after handwriting, we usually try to take a little break. So this break might be a game where we're just reinforcing the things that we've been learning, but sometimes we go to the Make It Studio. And this is where we have those art projects that I was telling you that we really are very purposeful about choosing. And Mrs. Nelson um, is the artist that teaches these um, segments, and she really is a trained artist. So it's not just a craft that, you know, somebody's put together. If I were doing it, it would just be a craft and be pretty lousy. So she does a great job. She will um, tell you about different elements of art, and she will bring a lot to those um, segments. So you'll enjoy that a lot. Sometimes we also will go to Gabe's workshop. Gabe is a fix-it man, and he will be fixing, in this case, flashlights for the police officers, but he always has a Bible story that goes along with the theme that we are studying, and he will share those stories with us, and he's a great, great storyteller. So we enjoy that too. So those are just some of the fun things that we put in the language arts lesson that go along with that theme that we're learning in heritage studies or science or literature, and then we try to bring it up again in, in the language arts lesson. So after that, there's more practice. Um, we do some phonics practice pages, and the first, usually the first page, I will lead the student through, and we'll do that together. And then the second page, I will typically go over the directions, maybe go through an example, and then let the student do on their own to make sure that they're getting that practice independently to make sure they know how to do whatever the concept is that we're, we're learning about. Um, on the reading days, this is a treat. So these are the days where it's only reading, nothing else. Um, we start off with a roundup review with Hopscotch. Hopscotch puts on his cowboy hat and he comes and visits with me and we round up all kinds of things. We round up insects. We round up flashlights and things for camping. We round up, well, even I think tacos one lesson. So we round up all kinds of things and he helps us review the word families and the splash words, remember those are the high frequency words, that are going to be covered in the lesson with Mrs. Lawson. So these are short, about five minutes, but we have a lot of fun reviewing together. Then Mrs. Lawson comes and she teaches the reading story. So we got, have some new readers. Here's some of the new ones that we got this year, well, this year with this edition. And um, she does a great job of just bringing them to life, um, just helping the students learn to, you know, pay attention to the details. The first reader doesn't have any words, but they're learning, the students are learning to look at the pictures and find all those little details. And she also has a very cozy reading corner that is part of the library. And so she just does a great job of finishing out that weekly theme um, with a reader for us. 
and she really has a passion for teaching reading and for making sure that children love to read, that she helps them understand what they're reading, that comprehension that is so, so, so important. And she encourages parents to get involved as well. You know, the best way to become a better reader is to read. So the student should be reading, yes, silently to themselves, reading with me, but also reading to others. And so she does a great job of um, sharing that love of reading and, and to love sharing reading with others. 